Well, friends, we are back with the self-powering uh, diesel heater project. Other David has made us a thing. It's currently in here. Let me just show you bits of it, and I'll put some pictures on screen as well as I'm talking about it. So in here, let me bring you in for a closer look. What we have here is a custom machined uh, diesel heater the kind of the aluminium, not the burn chamber, the heat exchanger where the burn chamber's inside and this is the aluminium outside. Uh, these are the stock fins at the front and what he's done is he's milled three sides oh, let me see, there's one down there three sides are flat, the base is completely flat, he had them welded up and machined hopefully I'll be putting pictures on the screen as well just now so the machine flat, there are three 60mm uh, square uh, TEG modules, they are uh, mounted on the sides, I have used uh, copper based thermal heat paste stuff, that stuff, uh, to uh, go in between the TEG, the, the heat exchanger, the TEG and then the cooling fins on the top. So what we have basically here is, the inside gets, the hot side gets really really hot from the burn chamber and then the cool side is cooled by the air passing through the diesel heater body being hit up and then leaving through the usual heating route so we're not adding any bulk to the system and well uh, okay let's put it back together and we will fire up how about that let's i'll put it back together i'll fire up and i'll bring you back once it's up and running right well we are up and running the heater is uh, still running I should note that the it's still giving out hot air out of the hot air output and I have attached this 12 volt bulb to the output wire from the tags. I wish there was a way to not, me not have to shout over the sound of a heater. We also have the a new DC to DC uh, converter, a buck converter. Now, let me just move the Dremel out of the way and bring in the multimeter. Oh, I have managed to wrap a lead around the uh, multimeter. Hold on, this is going to be... Right, what do we get on the output of the tags? We have 10... 10 volts. What well, should we call it just 10 volts? Just a nice round 10 volts. Okay, 10 volts. So what we'll do now is we'll put the connection through the uh, boost converter and uh, bring it up to... Well, a usable 14 volts, because we kind of need 14 if we're going to charge a battery. So, let me take this out first. And I'll put it into the output. I don't know if you can damage tags by dead shorting them, so I'm not going to do it. If you do know if that's a thing, just let me know in the comments if I should be worried about shorting out my tags. Right, as we can see, let us zoom down on this a bit. Where's the zoom button going? There we go. So we've got a reading of 11 volts. Let me bring the light bulb in shot. Is that in shot? Nearly. Ah, oh, this is awkward. Okay, I'm going to have to... Right. So, 11 volts in, and I'm going to turn it on. And I, I should have already set it to 14 volts output. So, input now drops down to 9 volts, output becomes 14 and the bulb is much brighter than it was before because obviously it's now getting 14 volts instead of 10. And we are generating a whopping 360 milliamps or 5 watts. So we are getting 5 watts of power out of this system. So we could charge a battery with 5 watts of power. I should really put up a comparison shot of the 14 volt bulb and the uh, 10 volt bulb. But I hope, hopefully on camera it's noticeably brighter than just the uh, 10 volts. Right, let me turn this here off so we can have a little discussion. Well, this is also maybe not that interesting to watch, but as it cools down, we get to see the point at which it cuts out. I don't know if I can get everything shot. So it's still trying its best, and there you go. 
if we turn that off it just shows us the actual output voltage so there we go so it doesn't take a lot no it takes not if, if not a lot of dropping heat mm. that doesn't sound any way of the we me we yeah basically you need a lot of heat and leaving a little drop in heat reduces the current and voltage output a lot right I'm going to finish this uh, burning off whatever it's setting fire to on the bench uh, might be some cable ties or thermal insulation alright we'll let that f finish ok it's finally gone quiet we can't open up and have a look inside and talk about things so the first thing is that it's not technically impossible to generate enough power to charge a battery using heat and the thermal electric generators. It's economically unviable to do so. That's the problem. How much is one of these tags? Uh, I mean, I think these, these tag modules are horrendously expensive. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's either like £100 plus or nearly £100 for a single tag module and there's three of them on here. So you've got like, let's just read, let's just say £100. There's £300 worth of tag modules to generate five watts of electricity. That's, that, that's, and it, it can, and no, no matter what you're doing, that, that's not going to work uh, economically. Second of all, this heater has now been heavily modified. It's not like you can DIY this in your garage, unless you've got a lathe or a mill. And machining expertise, that's just not possible. Not ten well, not technically possible. You know, you could, you could hit it by an angle grinder, but you're never going to get it flat, so you're going to reduce the efficiency furthermore. And, well, another point is, we're kind of doing it wrong. Because what originally we wanted was to use the waste heater that's going up the exhaust and out into outer space to see if we could use that to generate enough electricity to charge here. So in that respect, no. We'll, ju we'll just go on a firm, no we can't. And from now on, all we're doing is doing this for fun. Because we've got more tags. There's three on there, there's another three on the exhaust block and we're going to make something else. We're not finished, we're now just playing, okay? We're, we're, we've established that you can't, that you, well, you, nobody's going to, okay? It's going to cost so much money and yeah. Well, with your five watts, you, you couldn't run the heater, but you could charge a phone or you could charge a different battery pack or you could run five watts worth of lights off of the heat from the heater and not using any more uh, energy just what the heater's consuming plus your five watts uh, oh ah, that's what instead of using this uh, DC to DC converter people were saying to use a solar MPPT controller so I bought one but I was reading the specs on it and it needs battery plus two volts Obviously, because that's how the charging system works. So if I've got a 12-volt battery, I need 14-volt input before it'll start charging. So I didn't even bother to bring it down and plug it in because it says it needs, well, battery plus 2 volts. And if three of them are only making 10 volts, well, I need another one to at least get us, well, hopefully another one to get us up over enough to get us the 14 volts. The MPT, MPPT controller would even turn on. But as people said, yes, they are much more efficient uh, extracting the energy from the system and converting it into usable volts for charging batteries. But, like I say, we've not got enough volts to run one, run one of them yet. So, for the things I'm going to do with this setup, I have ordered from Ally Express uh, more water cooling blocks. So these are the ones that we had three stuck on that way. I've ordered 60, three 60 mil ones so I can put a water block on each of the surfaces of the thing and then we'll just plumb them somehow we'll worry about that when they arrive we'll plumb them water cool them and same as before we'll have the bobble vans water heater working backwards we'll be sucking the cold air through it cooling the air cooling the 
cold side of the tegs, heating the hot side with the heater and seeing what kind of voltage and current we get out of it that way. Again, we're just playing for fun. Uh, oh, that was the other thing I was going to say. So the efficiency of this system will decrease the hotter your van gets. Because obviously at the moment, we're bringing in nice cold air, cooling the tegs down and putting the heat out. But as the temperature of your van increases, the air that you're bringing in is now going to be warmer and warmer and warmer, thus reducing the cooling effect on these fins and lowering efficiency so your voltage and that will drop. So start off great and you get lots of, <laughs> lots, lots of energy at the start and then it'll start to taper off as your thing equalises and then when it goes down to idle, yeah basically it doesn't, it stops at that point because there's not enough heat. Heating the hot side to make enough uh, voltage for things to turn on and things to work. So that brings me to the whiteboard. Yeah, here we go. Wait, how much of the whiteboard is in shot? I'll have to move my camera back a bit. Go oh, on, get, get, get along, little doggy, get along. Is in as much of this in shot? Some of this is in shot. All right, lean there. Ah, uh, right. So the thought I was having was, we want to reclaim energy from the waste exhaust. So imagine the output of the diesel here. Here's the exhaust and here's the air intake. So I have an in arrow and an out arrow. What if we got a cylinder? Here is a cylinder like that. And we mounted the tegs on their sides, inside. One, two, three, like that. Three tegs. And then we put fins on one side Fins, 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 fins on the other side. You get the idea, right? So there's now fins on both sides. And then we run the exhaust in one side. So the exhaust comes in and goes through. Hopefully imparts all of its heat or some of its heat into the hot side of the tags. And then the air intake of the heater draws cold air in the other way through the cooling, the cooling side and then into the air intake of the heater. So we're using the waste heat and preheating the combustion air as it goes into the heater. Problems I can see from this are your hottest teg is getting the warmest air. So I don't know if if you'd be better like pulling the cold air in from this side and then having your now slightly warmed air looping back and going into here but I was trying to make it into a, a compact package so you've only got like one heat, one thing with a hose and a hose and a hose and a hose and all your tags and that are inside I'm not even sure how we would build this Is, if, can, can anyone, has anyone seen anything that I've done so far? I, can, I can't, I can't tell something I'm, that might look okay because obviously we'd have to cut this in half or do you build like a cage, uh, a skeleton structure that's got the tags mounted on it and then you slide that whole thing inside a pipe and then obviously the wires have to be somewhere probably like high temperature silicon ones. Oh, I say that, you can run them on the cold side and you have a skeleton frame and you build all it in on the frame and then you slide that inside the whole pipe. But this way, you would be using the waste heat running over the tags and the cold, cold air, the air intake coming in. Or do you bring, bring... Uh, I need two hands for this. Or do you build a box? Like, kind of like we had previously. Do you build a box and have your exhaust hole come in here, hit your three tags that are inside and again have the cold air intake coming in and then see that but that way you mean you're either having to go out one side and then you just miss this one because the path of least resistance will be that way and you'll end it up the side same as with that you're hitting the hot side do you go out both sides do you go out the top again through little holes uh the box is just kind of a bit of a mess 
So ideas, send me your ideas, please. What are your thoughts? We have got three more, three more um, 60 millimeter TEG modules and mostly limited uh, milling and construction skills and techniques and equipment. Think DIY, go DIY hard. That's your keywords of D What can a man do in his shed? But those are ideas, uh, yeah. Uh, let me put my whiteboard away. That's kind of where we are right now with the tags. We are, well I am, waiting for the water blocks to come from Aliexpress, which is China, uh, for them to come so we can water cool these and see if we can get more energy out of them. The next, the next, next stage after trying uh, the um, I don't know, we might try in a pipe. The other, the other, other option is to build a completely custom uh, diesel heater heat exchanger, in which you we can get the tags even nearer the hot side, because these are these are the real the real tags. They can take high temperature, which is not like the other ones, which are like basically for a cool box. And the solder melt side, these ones don't melt. Well, they do melt eventually, but they don't melt as easily. So the, basically, the hotter we can get them on the hot side and the cooler we can cool, get them cool, the more energy we'll get out of them. But again, that is building a custom heater housing body. So, without outside the realms of economically viable. Unless a manufacturer decides to take it on board and start selling, you know, ready-to-go pre-made things that you can just unbolt from your current diesel here, bolt it straight on, you've got your two wires and happy days, away you go and generate as much energy from your diesel heater as you want, as well as generating heat. Because we're still trying to... The point was to get free electricity. It's not free, it's not like over unity. What we're doing is just extracting... Uh, energy from the heat from burning diesel, so we're burning a fuel to generate electricity. But doing it this way, while it works, we're still wasting heat going out the exhaust. And we were kind of supposed to scavenge that heat and make it usable, but it seems quite difficult to do, and I'm just bashing rocks together here in the workshop, so I um, implore the clever people of YouTube, my subscribers, to have a think about it, draw pictures, fire up CAD, and send them, send them in, and me and other David can discuss what's actually technically doable by us, and we'll see what we can come up with. Any questions, comments, eh, as usual, just leave them down below, and I'll read them, and either forward them, or etc, etc, and try and answer where best I can, and two good people, as always, Thank you for watching.